far as I know, Starfield is going to be the biggest AAA banger for Xbox, guys. This game is going to be so big. It's going to be a thousand planets, a hundred solar systems, and not only on top of that, this is one of the biggest games Bethesda ever had this big of a team working on. This game have 500 people working on this game. Now, remember, uh, I think Skyrim and Fallout, I think they only probably had like 200. Starfield got 500 people working on this game, polishing this game up, getting it ready for next year, and you already know it's going to be day one on Game Pass. That's what I'll, I've been telling you guys this since day one, man. This is what Sony needs to do, is to bring more value to the PlayStation platform and PlayStation Plus Premium. And you will have things like this. So, without further ado, man, I'm just going to let y'all guys pretty much listen to the creators of Starfield, the biggest AAA banger, coming next year. So, and, and I would just like to add one more thing. This is like a sci-fi um shooter and i think you can play in first person and third person on this game and it's like kind of like cops and robbers you can play with the good guys or the bad guys and you can build your own spaceship and your own planet so i think this right here is going to be amazing and create your own characters too as well so this is going to be one of the biggest triple a bangers guys and we're going to let the game developer pretty much break down this game for you guys so you can get a better understanding of how the game is going to be. So without further ado, here we go. First thing that we want to know is what inspired Starfield? Oh, you know, so many things. Um, I think the main ones that you know, I'm going to go back like in time here. Um, Sundog is a big one. Amazing game, kind of like the science fiction game when Ultimas were out. It also had this partialist interface, kind of one of the first games where you're moving objects around and putting them together, but great game where you had your own ship and you could explore around uh, that I loved. Another one, this is a kind of pen and paper uh, role-playing game at the time where, you know, D&D &D was getting popular, is this game Traveler. Traveler was a little more hard science fiction. The other thing there is one of the first games I programmed on the Apple II at the time. I really wanted to make a Traveler game. It was also my first time realizing that computers had memory that you could run out of. <laughs> I can already see the comments, people saying, you've been running computers out of memory for 40 years now, but that's an easy comment, everybody. You can do better. Um, but, but those are the big ones, hearkening back to those to those old role-playing games that we loved, and hey, can we pull off something like this with today's computers and consoles, and, and et cetera. You mentioned uh, hard space or hard sci-fi, and I know that that's one of the things that's been hotly debated in the community. Is Starfield considered a hard sci-fi? I never quite know, like, because that's always like, what do they think it is if you say yes or no? I think it is more hard to us, hard hard science fiction, where you can draw that line from, okay, here's what, here's how man explored space, and you can like even look at our ships and say, all right, that has some you know visual identity back to that. But it's a trap question because it's a video game, right? Like a hard science fiction video game would be you die in space cold. You know, good example, we were really into fuel and how the gravity drive works. And like, I'm reading papers on like quantum physics and you know, bending space in front of you. You don't actually warp, you bend the space, you bring the space towards you. And so what we were playing that and it became like very punitive to the player. Your ship would run out of fuel and the game would just stop. You just want to get back to what you're doing. So we've recently changed it where the fuel in your ship and the grav drive limits how far you could go at once, but it doesn't run out of fuel. Maybe there'll be an update or a mod that allows that, but that's what we're doing now. Constellation members are excited about the character customization and the traits in the game. Can you talk more about what players will experience with the traits? I love our trait list. It's super fun. 
but each one obviously comes with some sort of negative as well and we have a way in the game kind of an activity or quest you can do to remove that trait as opposed to don't like my character I want to start over each of them are something like that you can solve that removes the entire trait for the rest of your playthrough the last question we have speech checks and dialogue that reflect your character build do you want to expand upon that at all? yeah look we've done a lot of different dialogue systems we've gone back to kind of a, I'll call it like a classic Bethesda style dialogue with you're looking at the character and how they emote, you have a series of choices there. The, the scope of the game, the amount of content we're making is a bit more than we've done before in terms of quests and things like that, but the depth in some of this stuff with the dialogue, we just passed 250,000 lines. And so that's a lot of dialogue, but we've gone through it and the impact is really there. And that includes my favorite speech persuasion system. You're not talking us out of this score. It feels like it's part of the dialogue, but you're spending points to persuade them. You're willing to give up the ship just like that? It feels natural, not like I've entered some other mode where we're not I'm not doing regular dialogue, just I'm in this mode of persuading you uh, to get what I want. Having a way with words might prove useful. That's it. That's all the questions that I had for today. Yeah, this has been great. You know, everybody out there, you know, keep it coming. We do really read it all, and also we look forward to showing you more of the game in the future as well. Now, that right there was one of Starfield's game developers pretty much breaking down how the game is going to be. and what you guys can experience and look forward to going into 2023 like i said before guys if you would like to jump into the xbox ecosystem all you guys have to do is click the link in the description and it will take you there if you have a pc or pretty much a um something like a steam deck um or mobile or your televisions or your mobile phones like i said pc or your steam deck and you can jump into the xbox ecosystem so you guys will have all of these triple a bangers dropping into the service next year day one you i'm gonna say it one more time day one not day two not day three not a week later day one because they are trying to bring us value to game pass like i said before man uncle phil ain't messing around now uncle phil is not messing around guys this is what you guys are going to be getting going forward this is not a joke anymore that's why they are trying to fight to stop the call of duty activision blizzard deal because they already know once these triple a bangers start rolling out and they get the ball rolling and now that um pretty much xbox fans are going to have ammunition to fight back with the fanboys over there at sony and the ponies they can't say nothing they won't be able to say anything like they're gonna now they're always gonna move the goalposts and say well we've been doing this for years and years but how how does it seem like it's always wrong if xbox is ready to compete now why can't they want to compete now why can't they just get credit for trying to do something like this this right here is a big move and a big step they have been working on this game for i think about around eight years you know well into the xbox one generation they have been developing this game now you're gonna have probably have people coming out talking about crazy stuff like oh it don't look next gen oh it ain't got race racing oh it ain't got they're always going to try to move the goalposts to make you know to knock xbox to make them feel like they're not doing nothing big but i'm here to stand behind uncle phil and xbox and say just keep going man keep doing what y'all guys are doing y'all doing a great job and this is an xbox that we've never seen before like a lot of people have already been like a lot of people have been asking and begging and begging and begging for xbox to compete year in year out for how long about about 10 years now so now that they're finally competing it seems to be a problem with sony they want to try to do all this blocking rights and blocking deals as a matter of fact they were blocking games from coming to game pass they were doing exclusive backdoor deals paying people paying people millions of dollars not to allow their games to be dropped on game pass day one it don't matter if it was uh indie games multi-plat games it prop hey it may have even been some triple a banger games that was supposed to come to game pass but they won't see the light of day on game pass because we don't know 
the amount of games that Sony was blocking. Now, it may have been a lot of them. The, the list may come out, it may be like 10 to 20 games that we will never see on Game Pass that we should already have had on Game Pass. You know? Yeah, especially Spider-Man. Marvel, Marvel should be ashamed of herself for even allowing something like that to happen. You know what I'm saying? Let them create their own superhero. They did God of War, Uncharted, Horizon, you know, stuff like that. So why would it be so impossible for Sony to create their own hero? You know, they should have never gave up Crash Bandicoot, Crash Bandicoot, whatever. They won't bring, they won't remake Twisted Metal. You know how many fans are asking for games to be remade that Sony is not doing, but they're focusing on damaging and, and stopping and cop blocking on Xbox on everything. Just hating on Xbox for no apparent reason, y'all. Like, this is ridiculous. It's these Decepticons over there, Sony don't care about nothing but money. You know what I'm saying? They don't. They're not focusing on bringing us value that we have been asking for for years, and they're still, they're still overcharging for everything over there. Everything have a paywall behind Sony. If Sony's involved with it, you better believe you're gonna have to dig deep into your pockets. And I'm gonna leave it right there, man, to next time. Um, we're gonna touch on some more stuff later on, guys. But you guys already know what to do, man. Make sure you smash that like, that subscribe button, click that notification bell so you guys can be notified on all of the new latest and greatest news in these gaming streets. And if you would like to jump into the PlayStation ecosystem on your PC or Xbox Game Pass ecosystem on your PC, Steam Deck, mobile, televisions, and getting ready for that Starfield come next year. I know you guys are turned up and hyped. So, you already know what to do, man. Peace.